guys, go to hardafseltzer.com. Get some 8% seltzer shipped right to your house. We got the peach, we got the watermelon, we got the pina colada and the blue raspberry. We're also available in over 200 stores in the state of Florida and Tennessee. And if you're heading out to the Major League ballparks this summer, make sure to check us out in the Miami Marlins Stadium, as well as Tropicana Field, home to the Tampa Bay Rays, as well as the Tampa Bay Rowdies. We are live inside all three stadiums. So if you're down in Florida this year, check us out. Go to hardafseltzer.com today and check your store locator or order them right to your house. Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Yeah, welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. It's the old Sunday night show means we're boozing on a Friday. We got some repeat listeners back here. Was that the, did you fall over and break that table? Was that you back there who broke the table last time? I love it if it is. You can come on up to the microphone over there with, uh, with Bob if it was. I saw a broken table out back to Anthony, and I don't know where it came from, but Jesse said, hey, I think the girl was the one who broke it and got trashed, and it would be amazing if it's true. There's no way. Was no, that you? Not break a table. I don't have any evidence. I don't have any bruises on me. No. <laughs> so you're you're saying absolutely not, knowing how many cameras are in here. You think that uh, you can get away with that? Ye- absolutely. Did you break the table? I did not. Last chance. <laughs> Last chance. I think that was yesterday's girl. It was yesterday's girl. She okay. was rocked. She, no, she was fine. No, she was no, with no. her husband. No. Yeah, no, she was rocked, she but had she like was fine. Seven seltzers. She did. Yeah, and which, but, by the way, I think is a record for a girl. And she was fine. I chatted with them. I stayed in, was doing invoices and shit. Yeah. I chatted with them for like an hour afterwards. And she, she did not fine. break the table. She did not break the table. And I also apologize to her. Lower Marion <laughs> is not in Delco. I get it. All right. It's Delco adjacent. She said if you did admit that on the show today, that she would out you, you tried to claim Kobe Bryant as, well, yeah. as a hometown guy. And it's that's not true. But she wasn't the one who broke it? it no. It wasn't me. It was her. All right. It yeah. was you. Yeah, that's it's what Jesse me. said. Oh, uh, it was you, wasn't it? No. It's fine if it was. Uh, at least you're attractive, and Dan and I can live with that. Well, she said I was her fifth favorite, so I'm going to out her. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. Uh, that I'm makes sense. I'm going to make up for that. Wait, I how many people are there? Feelings. Who? Yeah, so there's there's so five of us here. Last well, places. six, including Joel, but uh, Joel's, you know, Lord of the Rings back there. He's a, he's a hobbit. What's, yeah. uh, who do you got top five here out of us? Okay, Let's well, it. it was Jesse and then Giorgio. The fuck? And then Dan and then Ross. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm that far down the line? My wife is first? All right. Yeah, Jesse's first. Um, and who's fifth, Delco? Delco's fifth. All right, at least I'm above Delco. Jesus, dude. That's dark. That's dark. Put down the seltzer. You can't have any free seltzer today, okay? okay. Did can't you have t- any hard-ass seltzer. And today. then the girl, too, from yesterday was just kind of... Almost disgusted when she said the words Delco. Yeah. I understand, but don't you get it? You don't want to admit you're from there. Well, yeah, she's, she's from Lower Marion. So she's from it. the other side of Eight Mile, brother. <laughs> the main line, yeah. She's on the other side of the train yeah. tracks. <laughs> Clarence's parents have a real good marriage on mm-hmm. that one, dude. She, uh, she's from the rich side. Uh, but those guys were a blast. Congratulations uh, to both of them on uh, their upcoming nuptials. Uh, today's show, D'Anthony, uh, is going to be a fun one because what happens when there's strikes in Hollywood and things like that, they have to come up with things to fill content. Um, so typically they dip back into the past catalog and they start to do best of. Now, Entertainment Tonight was doing best of as far as actors. So they're showing like highlights of like uh, Jamie Foxx mm-hmm. and Kevin Hart and how The Rock made it and everything else. Uh, today's fun one that we're all four of us here are going to get involved in was Variety. Variety released a list of the top 30 greatest war films ever made. And we'll go through those today. I want to get your opinion. I think most of us have seen probably all of these, I think, are close to it. Some of the ones in black and white, I'm not sure if you guys have seen. Some of them they've shown in film school. So I've seen Stalag 17. I was in the play Stalag 17. Okay, so don't look at the list. Uh, I haven't reviewed it either. Wait, did you do that just for the free Nazi uniform? Yes, he was in a Nazi <laughs> uniform. There's a I, photo of him in his. Because uh, you could have done Sound of Music too, right? <laughs> yeah, I voted hard for the Nazi one. Is that in your yearbook? 
I am in my senior yearbook wearing a Nazi uniform. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's 100% true. Look at you. You're a young Prince Harry. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, all right. Let's get to So they don't rank them either, by the way, which I think is smart of Variety's part. They're probably worried that uh, veterans would get pissed off about it. There is one in here that is definitely going to piss you off. But uh, Yeah, I already know which one. Well, we'll find out. Uh, shit, Bob, you called it. First one up. Stalag 17. Well, that's I saw it. On the oh, you side. did? You yeah. fucking asshole. Well, you said black and white. First one's black and white. I said don't look, dude. There's some other black and whites on here. Um, so you saw Stalag 17. D'Anthony, did you see this? Uh, when I was a kid, probably, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what would you think of this, Bob? It's one, It's a incredible movie i mean it was directed by billy wilder william holden's the star yep. i mean like it's it's a brilliant movie uh if memory serves me correct i think william holden won the oscar for this yeah i it, think so it is a very very good movie i don't traditionally get down on like the old school movies but the war ones were shot differently than like the bogart movies like the bogart and i'll get yeah. killed for this in, in like the acting community for saying this but like with bogart and all those guys it was just so hammy for the camera mm -hmm. where I just couldn't get into it. But the war movies were different. Dialogue was different. It was shot differently rather than, you know, you show up in a smoky alley and you're like, hey, kid. And you're saying the, the stilted dialogue. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't get behind that shit. <clears throat> yeah. It's but Salt 17 is good. Uh, it's a very good film. So, all right. We're off to a good also, start. Also, uh, it's weirdly, even though it's a drama, uh, what Hogan's Heroes was based on. Was it really? Yeah, I didn't know that. And they have they they share a character. The character I played, the Nazi I played, Sergeant Schultz, is in both Stalag Seventeen and then Hogan's Heroes. No shit. Okay, I didn't I didn't get down on Hogan's Heroes that much. Uh, a little a tad before my time. The movies though, a lot of them we did for film school, so it is what it is. Uh, next up, War and Peace. Hmm. I didn't see War and Peace. Full disclosure on that. I feel like a terrible human. I also never read the fucking book. I I never saw the movie. Um, but Did you read I, the book? Yeah, but like as a teenager, I don't remember that shit. Okay. I mean, I wasn't terribly interested in um, the peace aspect of in it. Russia. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, it's uh, it's set in I think Saint Petersburg during the Napoleonic Wars. Mm -hmm. It's like I don't give a fuck about the Russian Empire, dude. That's not interesting. Yeah, so I never really got into it to be honest. <laughs> yeah, the book was daunting. I remember, you know, there, we were asked to read it, it's I like think. 900 something no pages. Shit, I think dude. 930 something pages or something. It was something. the longest book I was ever handed to read, and I was like, no, that's a hard I'm sorry, 1,225 yep, pages. 1,200 pages. God Fuck damn. that. So when I heard about the movie, I was like, no, I'm going to skip both of those. Uh, Bob, did you read the book and or see the movie? No, no, I wasn't touching either of these. The Me neither. Pro the movie, honestly, I, I've never seen it, but I feel like it's not good. Uh. You know, I, it doesn't have any awards next to it. Well, it's so. a Soviet movie. Okay. So it's, it's uh, you know, it, it was like a Soviet epic. But uh, they said at the time it was one of the most expensive films ever made and also shot in 70 millimeter instead of 35 uh, back in uh, 1965. I heard uh, your mom was shot in 70 millimeter, bitch. She sure was. Yeah, so. She sure was. Yeah. So you're welcome. Fuck all you you're assholes. Welcome, man. Yeah, it's Friday. It's Friday. Uh, next up is the big parade in nope. 1925. Didn't see this. Nope, Didn't absolutely this. not. Although I, film. there, yeah. there was, uh, there's one, there's one book that I thought should have been adapted like this, right? Silent film style. Mm -hmm. Um, it's called Johnny Get Your Gun. You ever heard of it? No. It's about the the song won by Metallica is about this book. And it's a guy who's in World War One, and he steps on a landmine, loses both arms, both legs, hearing, and sight. Jesus Christ. So he's just a fucking torso and a head in a fucking bed, pleading with everybody around him to kill him. But they can't hear him, right? Fuck but it's a God. whole, like, the. Uh, I thought in, this, in the black and white silent film era, it would have been a really good psychological thriller kind of, right? Well, the odd thing is, you could still do it today. There was a movie called The Artist, which I really liked. That was the last silent film I think that's ever been made. Uh, it, well, this one wouldn't necessarily even have to be silent, but it would need to be super dark. And I don't, I don't mean color wise, like black and white. I mean, like it, it's, it's the the story is very dark. What if I just film myself uh, in five years, reading it a little bit every night to my child? <laughs> And it's like this boy's life where who's that for? It's just for ten years later. I don't know. Just funny. Just a, just a, it's like a it's like a two girls one cup reaction. Except I'm <laughs> oh, poisoning my child's God, like, dude, soul. That'd be great for I mean just over and over and over again. 
It's it's like that Ethan Hawke movie where he just keeps getting older, and they shot it over the course of what was it, seventeen you know? years yeah. or some shit. Boyhood. Well, no, it was seventeen. Boyhood, that's it. Boyhood. It was seventeen between two of the films, right? Oh no, that's that's a different one. Yeah. That's after yeah. sunset. Yeah, after, after midnight. Sunset, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, Big fan of that series, though. But yeah, there was a, there somebody made a movie not too long ago, five or ten years ago, and it was about. I think it was about a human intelligence guy or a sniper or some shit. I think I think it was human though, and it's just a guy doing surveillance on somebody and the men, like the mental process of being of sitting in a room by yourself and having living that life all the time, mm -hmm. but kind of voyeuristically peering in. I don't remember the name of the movie, but something like that. Like it would be that the plot mostly takes place inside the person's head, so you'd have to be pretty creative to do that. I think that'd be great though. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be down. Uh, what was the, the Ryan Reynolds one where he's in the box? Buried, I think it was called. Um, I've never seen it. It's, yeah, it's 90 <clears throat> minutes, and he's buried underground in a, in a casket, and then he's trying to get out. But if you shot it similar to that, mm -hmm. I just don't know how you'd get the dialogue across of what is going on in that guy's mind. It would have to be, well, was he able to make facial expressions? I mean, he's paralyzed as well, right? Oof. So it's like you can't. You'd almost have to go being John Malkovich and get in somebody's mind like that. Yeah. That'd be dope, though. Fuck, that'd be good. Uh, next up here is Braveheart in 1995. Obviously a fantastic movie. Um, Hear me out. Okay. <laughs> it sucks ass. Wow. <laughs> wow, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? It's fucking... Are you joking? No, it's such a mid-ass movie. Like, it's not that good. Five I, Oscars it won, Bob. I, I can't believe that it won any. Like, I have so a, mediocre. I have a fucking theory on that statement right there. Okay. I think because there's been so many parodies of it over the years that it taints how great the movie was when you first saw it in theaters. I don't think so. That's crazy. It's, it's, it's fucking insane. There's a much better war Mel Gibson movie. Well, we'll the get Patriot. to it. Mm -hmm. I no. think the Patriot's better. But dude, like, Do you like the Patriot better? Yeah. No. I don't either. Patriot's I'm Braveheart all day. Better. Braveheart, I mean, first off, uh, th and this isn't that big of a deal, but like, it is probably every bit as inaccurate as, um, what's the one you hate? Uh, fuck, the Catherine Bigelow movie. Hurt Locker. It is like every ounce as inaccurate sure, as yeah. a Hurt Locker. But it did introduce, as a teenager, I found out about Prima Nocta. Yep, that's same here. <laughs> and I've been trying to apply that to every <laughs> new couple I've met for the last 30 years. Com completely right? completely made up, by yeah. the way. Prima Nocta never happened. No shit. It's not real. No. I didn't know that. Not, that's one of the many lies the film tells you. Yeah, wow, no, I, I understand great... that, Bob. I don't give a shit. Yeah, <laughs> I, it should be real. And, like, I wanted that to be real, and I expected that to be real. Until you just said it, I would have had no fucking idea. Now you ruined Prima Nocta for me and everyone else who listens to the goddamn show. Shit, Bob. If you're going to write and include a storyline in there that's so specific and exact to set off a whole fucking war... That's a really good one to make up and insert. Uh, insert. Yeah. Nailed it. Pun intended, okay? Are we doing this? Yeah, we're we doing this and we're not doing this, huh? I enjoyed it. We're going to let it hang here today. It's a Friday. good movie and saying that it's not is fucking stupid. You guys are just haters. I don't, I don't like it. Like the acting in it? What? When he's he... getting his fucking bowels ripped out of his body with that hook? Eh. Come on, dude. I don't hate it. The I... hanky falls out of his hand. He sees the dead wife in the crowd. The guy slowly closes his eyes in slow motion. It's also a very good classic epic. Like, there's a first, second, and third act in this film. They yeah. don't do shit like that anymore. You have to have some level of appreciation. Plus... The writer's one of the best there is. Doing, doing a period piece like that and big fight scenes pre-CGI and shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's a lot of effort went into this. And you're a real piece of shit. Yeah. You're a real piece of good. shit, Bob. I mean, I want it on the record. He said it was a bad movie. I just said the Patriots better. So you do like Braveheart? Yeah, I like Braveheart. Okay, so it's just Bob on an island right now? I don't understand it's why fine. two non-Americans, three non-Americans starred in the Patriot. Mel Gibson's American. Mel Gibson's American. No, he's, he's, no, he's yeah, not. He's, he's, he's Australian. He's, no, he's not. No, he's not. No, that's, he's not. That's, that's, that's a, a myth. common misconception because he was in Mad Max. No. Yes, look, at, look, at, look it up. He's American as fuck. 
He's American now. No, he's no. been American. No, he was born in the United States. Yeah, he was States. born in New York, yeah. But he, he was? Lived, he, yeah, but his he, he lived overseas for a while. How long? I don't know. It was as a teenager, though. I don't think it was this, a child. Is this a Kobe Bryant sitch where he's claiming Italy and he only lived there for like two years as a kid? He's not Australian. Yeah. No, he's not Australian, but he did live overseas. I thought he lived in like Fact South Africa check for this, a while. Bob. I got to know how many years he lived there. Uh, in Australia, he moved to Australia in 1968 when he was 12. Okay. And um, he moved he, back at like 19, I think. Yeah. Or something like that. So or after high school. Yeah. So seven <laughs> years, roughly, that he was living in Australia? Something like that, yeah. All but right. that, I don't consider that American. No. You dipped out during the formative years. <laughs> sure Fuck did, you. dude. And then Heath Ledger, who, you know, obviously is a good actor and other stuff, but he was that he was not great. He was in the terrible Patriot. in the Patriot. I agree. Um, I but agree. Jason Isaacs Everything, Always everything he's in, he's great, but he's a fucking Brit. You know what I mean? Like, oh, he's the best. But he, but he plays a Brit. I know he plays yeah. one, but fuck those guys. They yeah. shouldn't have had any peace. This is our revenge fantasy. You know what I mean? That we played out in real life to form our country. And you're going to bring Brits in? I don't know. <laughs> also, I mean, the biggest problem with that movie is uh, early on in the movie when he's just like, we are free men working his land. No. No. The slaves that he pays. Sure don't worry about that. Don't worry don't about that. Don't you worry about that slavery. Okay? Um, but I do... I would like to see. How would you feel about a, pre a patriot prequel? Oh, French and Indian War patriot when he does his war crimes. Oh yeah, let's go. I mean, fuck, yeah, dude. Let's that go. would be something. That'd be really right dope. There. Who would you pick to do that role, though? I mean, it's. <sighs> so my answer for everything is Timothy Chalamet. So. No, he's he's yeah. too big of a bitch to do that. Yeah, though. you're not. He's not going to be able to pack on any muscle. Yeah. Maybe Tom Holland. I love man. I like Tom Holland, dude. I'm a Tom Holland fan. I I, I I'll, I'll subscribe to that. But I'm I think in. he may have been older than those. I think he's in his 30s during that, right? Probably. Right, but Tom Holland, I think, is 29 now. Yeah, he's getting So he's, he's getting, getting there. Close, yeah. By the time he would get there. I was just fun. thinking of somebody who you look at them and you're like, oh, that's a man. Yeah. And it, neither one of the two guys you just said are, are dudes. I think They're Timothy Chalamet is masculinity at its peak. <laughs> oh, come on. Bob, if you, because you, you've never had any sexual intercourse with a male, correct? No. If you well, did, wait, though. Wait, wait, wait. You got your prostate checked this morning. That wasn't sexual. I hear, and I'm didn't finish I, me. to be honest, I'm feeling a little weirded out that a dude made Bob come today. <laughs> a dude, and then he just came right into work afterwards. Like it's not even a big deal. A dude makes me come every day. Well, yeah. a, a dude aside from yourself, oh, fuckface. Damn. But it's one of those things though, where it's you know you can go to a Jack Shack and have a, a normal day after that. You know, just go back and, and work in the afternoon. Yeah, but it's a, it's a tiny little Asian hand sure. doing that, not a not a dude. But you can still complete your day, and uh, no one would know, and you can live your life. Oh, like he this. told everybody. That's the problem. Yeah, sure did, Bob. Sure did. Uh, but that prequel would be great. But here, here's where I'm going with this. If you have to fuck a dude, it's probably Chalamet. That's the first one you pick. Easily dominated. Uh, and then also, looks-wise, a little femme enough where you're like, all right, cool, I could probably, I could probably come within five, ten minutes. Enough. Nah. What? Nah. Who? Nah. Who's your dude then? If you're going to fuck a man, you might as well fuck the most max masculine men you could find, right? Like, you want to dominate I a man? do not. I that do sounds kind of gay, dude. I know. I want to get it over with, and I want it to be no. clean. Like I, and, yeah. and, and, and at least have some resemblance to a woman. Yeah, I'm not, no, I, need, I'm, I, I might absolute. bang dudes, but I'm Are not you gay. Not, what was the 30 Rock <laughs> quote with uh, Will Arnett? Oh, yeah. You, you win sex with a man. That's yeah. as straight as it gets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should put that on set. Yeah. That's a great line. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Chalamet is who I'm going with first. I would have said Prince before him, RIP, obviously. But uh, Chalamet is who I go to now. So he's not doing that fucking role, in my opinion. What about like a dirty junkie like Tom Hardy? Nope. Too, too nasty, dude. Like you could tell he's had some rough shit for lunch and some bangers and mash or something like that. It would stink. He's like a blue belt now. Yeah. He probably, he's probably eating garlic and doing supplements and all that shit. It, probably, it would stink. You would smell it through the pores as he's sweating as you're fucking him. Like, I've thought about this, like, real in depth, obviously. And I don't want any part of that. Not Tom Hardy. Give me a Chalamet. I bet he smells like fucking rose. Clean rose running through those Harry pores. Harry Styles? Yeah, perfect. He'll wear the dress. Yes, perfect. Harry Styles, yes. Top two for me. Boom. Uh, next up is an animated war movie, and I don't know this. <clears throat> Never you know, heard of it. I'll ask it's Japanese. Grave of the Fireflies. Now, is here. this about Nagasaki and Hiroshima? No, it's Godzilla. No. Is it? <laughs> well, kind it's of. It's about, uh, uh, 
Let's it says see. Two, it says it's about uh, two children, 14 and four, who were orphaned during the U.S. firebombing of Kobe. Kobe who? Bryant. Oh, shit. No, I don't know what that is. Uh, Kobe is a region. But what war is that? Uh, World War II. It would have been World War II, yeah. Okay. But it was not the, it's not the nuke. It's just a firebombing. Which was more deadly, anyway. What is a firebomb? Napalm, basically. No shit. Yeah. yeah. I'd rather have a nuke, right? Oh, yeah. You want it to be over pretty quick. You yes. don't want to have uh, gel on fire stuck to your body. Oof. Probably. No, I'm good. Right? That I'm sounds good, like man. it might suck. I'm against it. Like, imagine getting <laughs> burned by hot oil, but much worse. The oil doesn't go out even if you jump underwater. Yeah. That's what napalm is. <laughs> Or white phosphorus, which is even worse. <laughs> like Bob's response there. I'm against it. One would hope, Bob. You know, one would hope. <laughs> oh, napalm. I'm against it. Gross, dude. Oh, that's great. Uh, next up wait, here. Wait, wait, Can I show you this great scene from a different anime? That, uh, that does sure. Are we going to get ding for it on YouTube? Probably. Oh, all right. Then I won't show it. Don't show it. All right. that's What's what, it from? What, it's from another anime, and it shows, it shows Hiroshima. It's what I was expecting to see in Oppenheimer. Okay, so is it another YouTube video? It's a YouTube short. But uh, it's not from YouTube. This These people ripped this content just like fucking we would be. Eh, give it a go. We're not monetized on YouTube anyways. Uh, what are they going to do, I guess, at this point? you know. So this is, unfortunately, I could only find this as a short, but okay. it's fucking... How long is it? Not long. All right. And do you have uh, a scene in mind that you know? What? Is there a scene in mind that you already know? Just play the goddamn video. Yeah, you, oh, it's it, a short. Yeah, it's a okay, short. Okay, oh, great. It's great. Yeah, go ahead and play it. Okay. Is there any volume on this? Uh, oh, Jesus it. Christ. It's just a dude melting. Yeah. All right, you can turn down the volume. I like that. Uh, that's crazy. That's, that's what sense. I thought I was going to see at Oppenheimer. That's what I did, too. I thought I was going to see babies melting and, like, you know, herds of, of Japanese people with their faces melted off. Well, they dropped leaflets the day before. In Oppenheimer. The US oh, did. shit. They brought that up in the movie. They were yeah. like, hey, we'll give them some advance yeah. warning, yeah. and uh, they can choose to be there or not choose yeah, to be Yeah, Steve there. Berm's mom was there. Shut up. As a baby, and her family fled the city. You're kidding. Oh, yeah. Did he tell this story on the show? No, he told it on his Instagram the other day, though. Shit. Yeah. Next time he's here, let's. I, I'd love to hear that story, mm -hmm. actually. <clears throat> um, it's fascinating to me. I loved Oppenheimer, and uh, and I didn't know much about it until the movie. So, yeah, I'd love to get him on and talk about that. Uh, next up is Ashes and Diamonds. This was in uh, 1958. I do not know this film. Yeah. Follows an anti-communist soldier who's ordered to kill a local secretary of the Polish Workers' Party, um, a task he increasingly doubts is worth doing. Yeesh. Cool. Says it's a grand and scale war film, but uh, move on to the next drama. one. I don't care about terrible. this. The Dirty Dozens up next. Now this is one of the best. This Fuck is a, yeah. this is a top ten at least. Shit, it's not yeah, top dude. five to be honest. Dirty um, Dozens, fucking dope. Like the whole process again. It's a classic film structure: first, second, and third act. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it's and not in a disjointed way. The way that. Um, uh, uh, Apocalypse Now was where it's two very distinct movies put together, right? Uh -huh. Or I guess you could say the same about Full Metal Jacket, it's similar to that. This is a first, second, and third act that all flows together really well. Um, and <clears throat> frankly, kind of tells some of the story of the early special operations in the United States, too. Because um, most of our original special operators were dirt bags and and european dissidents right mm -hmm. that's how we started the whole thing so this is i'm a big fan of this movie Same charles here. bronson and jim brown how you go to, and telly savalas i mean how, I know, how do you dude. go wrong with this people forget how great they were and it's uh i read an article about this movie the other day actually um that was completely unrelated to this i guess there's only one member left of the dirty dozen who's still alive from this film yeah donald don Suther sutherland yeah, yeah donald sutherland that's right i forget he's alive i know that's terrible <clears> but you just don't see him out that much anymore uh, but this movie's fucking fantastic. Mm -hmm. Charles Bronson, dude, was lights out back in the day. Telly Savalas was lights out back in the day. Because today's society and social media is so quick moving that it's like if people die, you get you know two hours to trend on Twitter and yeah. shit, and then you move on with life. You really forget how great some of these older actors were, but these were fucking dudes, man. Uh, we don't really have that anymore. It's full of chalamets. Yeah. This, is a, this is a cable classic. 
Oh yeah, this fucking, is a fucking TNT, brother. Yeah, Let's that's go. All the, it's on on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, dad's watching it every fucking time. Fu- dude, that's where I watched it. The first time I watched it was with my dad. A hundred percent. I was with. Uh, shout out to Jerry. What's up, dude? Uh, he's at home now. But uh, yeah, I, I, first time I watched it was with him. Um, and uh, big fan. I probably watched this movie with him five times. Uh, next up is uh, <laughs> City of Life and Death. Um, this one was in two thousand nine. Oh, fun. It's about the rape of Nan King. It is, yeah. But I did not see this. This is a black and white movie shot in 2009. Not interested. Me neither. It's a very dark subject matter. Sounds fun. What's the dark subject matter of it? Uh, Are you unfamiliar with what Japanese did to China? Uh, I am, actually. I Uh, am. A lot. So here, I'll give you a fun story of what they did. This one's fun. Okay. Yeah, we covered it's, this on the uh, Patreon on Software History. We just, uh, yeah, okay. we just did this one. And then this is actually less horrifying than the stuff I could tell you. So you see the Tell joke. me the fucking gross shit, dude. It's There's, Friday. We're getting fucked up. Yeah, I want to I want to hear the gross shit. All right. The grossest one that I covered was when it was the uh, Manila massacre. So when the US was re uh, liberating the Philippines, the Philippines uh-huh. and they were going into Manila, they were about a lot of the Japanese withdrew, but there were 10,000 mer- Japanese Marines who were like, fuck this, fuck America, fuck even retreating, and about 4,000 Army guys from the Japanese Army who also just got stuck there. They knew, So they like were doing the whole city fight, the whole city battle or whatever, but they knew they were fucked. So um, they just uh, went insane as the Americans slowly liberated the city. They would take babies from their fucking moms, throw them in the air, and then bayonet them mm. like a little sport. I mean, like it, star- it started fuck. rough because one of the first things they did were uh, the the southernmost um, <clears throat> the southernmost prison camps that they were in control of. They just locked all the POWs in the building and set them on fire and left, and just moved up to the next one. Right? Holy yeah. shit! They also, what ate, year was this, by the way? They also ate prisoner of wars. Uh, mm-hmm. This was forty five. So this 45. was near the end of the war. They, oh, they, so this goes back to what you were saying earlier. Uh, we had a conversation about Oppenheimer. And I said, how are the Japanese able to get over it so quickly? And you said they were doing awful shit back in the day anyway. So Horrible shit. Yeah. So the worst one was right. they set up a hotel that they had just deemed uh, their, um, the technical term for it was rape center. Uh, so they would just bring young girls and, and, and rape them to death. What's the sign on the front of that building look like? I think at that Christ. point it's rape, just rape center. Yeah. I think I don't. But think. in Japanese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, whatever the character yeah. for that is. Uh, just a screaming <clears throat> face with a tear on it. No, it's a Michigan State Spartan. <laughs> well, this might be just be the Big Ten logo, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's include everybody in that, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, but then there was one woman, girl, I actually should say, who they were like fucking sexually assaulting. And one, ge- you know how when you take like, like when you're a little kid and you take like cups or water bottles and you're like, Haha, I have boobs. Right. Yeah. Uh, so the Japanese got bored of the raping, and what they did was. Uh, they cut off her boobs and then put them on them and were like, oh, look, I'm a girl. Like the actual breast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking A, dude. So don't feel too bad about Hiroshima. I, did, I never did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't. Don't worry about that. Dan never did, and now no. I don't either. No. Fuck, dude. I knew none of this. It's going to haunt my dreams forever. How can homegirl grab some more booze after that one? Ah, that is dark. You got a whole fridge, man. I was not expecting. Oh, is, it, is it full? Yeah. I was not expecting it to get that dark today. Jesus Christ. It's bad. It's bad. Uh, People forget. Uh, fuck. These Friday shows would always get dark. Uh, next up, they were expendable, it says. Uh, 1945. Is that John Wayne? Yeah. Yeah. It's a John Wayne movie. See, this is what he was doing instead of being in the war. <laughs> well, his feet were flat, so it makes it tough, you know. <laughs> <laughs> fucking coward that's hilarious so he's a draft dodger and then also uh he decided to do a movie about the draft he was dodging about the war he was dodging oh yeah oh uh, i'm good thank you thank so you. much i'll take a hard af actually I um have to uh, the other ones were, were sent in for uh for somebody else thank you very much sure. and that's for breaking the table by the way and plus I learned it was me. let's so face sorry. it it's fun for the audience um you are admitting to it great great proud of you admitting is it the first step that's the first step <laughs> Oh, John Wayne, you son of a bitch. But this is about, um, so you know the Great Raid, obviously, right? Yes, Clay was in that This movie. is one of the and things Max. that precipitated that. So uh, a lot of uh, soldiers were there. 
Marines, actually. A lot of Marines were there in the Philippines. It was basically a U.S. colony still yeah. at that and point. They, and they got cut off from their naval power for a while, right? And then it, the naval power came back eventually, and this, Rangers pushed through the country and, and did that rescue operation. But, yeah, it was pretty rough. The okay. same day, uh, they invaded the Philippines the same day they hit Pearl Harbor. Mm. So it was like a, it was a two-pronged situation. It, they didn't just hit Pearl <clears throat> Harbor, and they were like, all right, let's do this. Like, they were inv invading the Philippines the same day. Okay. Uh, so this one, it says it got Oscar nominations for special effects and sound design. Um, but for me, I never got down on John Wayne, ever. I, I'll, this goes back to that thing I was saying about Bogart earlier, where you have that stilted voice where, is this a dagger I see before me? I can't get into that type of shit and that type of acting. I never really got the mass appeal of John Wayne, to be honest with you. Some of the Westerns, yes. It's like, the other shit that he did outside of that, not really, and I'll probably get killed for it, but... Whatever, man. I'm not a huge John Wayne fan, so this this is off my list anyways. I just I don't go back and watch John Wayne movies. Yeah. All right, now, the, the next one I saw in theaters. I love this film. I want to ask you how accurate this is. It's Three Kings. This one was with uh, Clooney, uh, Ice Cube, and Mackie Mock. Uh, did you see this movie, and how accurate is it of uh, soldiers trying to steal shit over there? Yes. It is. <laughs> But it, that used to be the standard, right? The spoils of war. Yeah. Like you sack a city. I mean, that's what the fucking crusades were really about. Nobody gave a shit about Jerusalem. Richard just wanted to fucking burn down every castle between uh, 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 Israel and, uh, or Palestine rather at the time, Palestine and fucking uh, England. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. That was what it was really all about. It's about getting shit, man. That's how fucking people get rich. That's how fucking every... Anybody that made their way up through the ranks via the Roman military back in the day, that's how they got rich. You just yeah. go fucking fuck up Gaul for a while, steal all their shit, sell their people into slavery, and now all of a sudden you're a senator. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how, you, that's how it's done. That's upward mobility, baby. <clears throat> yeah. Some would say capitalism is exactly the same. Uh, no, well. that's not right. But <laughs> it, it, you, you definitely, I think this should be the way it works. Like if you're gonna, I agree. If you're going to send me to some bullshit country like this, and pay on and so i think Ma mark Wahlberg and uh this was desert storm and ice cube yeah i think yeah. i think they're both ncos um so back then and in, in the early 90s they're probably making like 25 cents an hour something like that mm -hmm. uh, and then clooney is a special forces major i think if i'm if i'm not mistaken i believe so yes and that so he's making some money but he he's getting ready to get out of the military. I, I think if I remember the plot right, yeah, of course, hundred percent. This is something that could happen, and <laughs> maybe did. did happen. You know what I mean? Like if I, to be honest, in the early part during the invasion uh, of uh, uh, in the second Gulf War in Iraq 2.0, the GWAD version, people were stealing everything because we were liberating Saddam's palaces, liberated. Uh -huh. There were no people there. We were liberating the stuff that was inside them. You know what I mean? I wasn't. I wasn't there, but people were stealing the shit out of everything. Uh, so, so yeah. Let me ask you this. When I saw this film, and I loved it, by the way, I, I agree with it being on this list. I'm a, I'm a fan of this movie. It's David O. Russell, too, who's one of the best directors we have. Um, when I saw it, the only thing that I could think of is um, once you get the shit and then you're trying to transport it and everything else and they, you know, people got caught and, and, and all of that. What would the United States government have done with all of this shit if the soldiers didn't steal it? Like, where does that go? Like the gold, the money, everything else? Do they, does the U.S. keep it? Uh, yeah, I mean, they would probably give it to the agency and State Department to barter for stuff. So it, it would stay there on the ground and then you would barter with it with other countries? Not necessarily there. But the, yeah, I mean... Certainly the intelligence community would capture those resources and try to leverage them. Okay. Because that, that's why I didn't, like, I didn't feel bad where I was just like, all right, dude, what the fuck else are you going to do with it? Like, yeah, let these feel guys bad for whom? make some money and shit Saddam, like that. Saddam moved a billion dollars in, in yeah, dude. freshly printed currency out of the Bank of Baghdad. But they made these guys the bad guys of, you know, hey, they're stealing funk and shit and they shouldn't yeah. be doing it. It's like, <clears throat> no, dude, we're, who else is going to take it? The government? Yeah. Fuck the but government. Beyond all that, it's a pretty, there's a lot of funny stuff. And it, oh yeah, the acting is like it's almost like the big hit that Marky Mark was in. I think the year prior it was '98, right, with John Leguizamo. Same kind of campy feel to it, but mm -hmm. it, there's a lot of action. And the cinematography they did, where they show uh, an open cavity wound after you get shot, and the sepsis that it creates and stuff like that, and then doing a needle 
a, ch- a needle chest decompression. That that was all really interesting to me. A lot of stuff rang true about this too. So they did a good job on this one. Well, um, he's he's a great director. He mm-hmm. doesn't. I mean, he's a fucking cocksucker, and he does not leave any stone unturned. So, uh, not surprising. Did uh, did you ever attach explosives to Nerf footballs? No, no. But I, uh, yeah, that's the end of that statement. <laughs> <laughs> Cl- Clooney fought Russell on the set, by the way. The end. Everybody has. Yeah. He fought with uh, Lily Tomlin. No, like fist fought. I hey, look up. There's a clip of of oh, him screaming at Lily Tomlin. Yeah. And I think he threw a fucking whole script at her, or called, vice versa. Called her a cunt. Yeah. Called, called her a cunt. Like everything across the board. And that was old ass Lily Tomlin. So yeah, not none of this is surprising. Everybody who works with him hates him, and uh, he pushes it to the edge. The rumor behind the scenes is that he's trying to get the best at performances out of the actors, but I don't necessarily agree with that mentality um, or technique, if you want to even call it that. So, whatever. He's good, and all of his movies are great. That's why he gets away with being an asshole. Do you want to work with somebody like that on a daily basis? Probably not. Uh, next up, Fires on the Plane, 1959. This was a Japanese war film. Uh, That's one of those directors that uh, uh, Tarantino always talks about. I have not seen this movie. Have you? No. Um, it says, uh, Khan Ichikawa was originally criticized for its violence and morbid themes, uh, but in the years since its release, it's become more highly regarded as a chilling, realistic depiction of war that roots itself under your skin. Uh, haven't seen it. Haven't seen it. But, sounds, uh, sounds gnarly. Yeah. I'm, look, I'm in if, if you're going to give me that. Uh, the New York Times critic who, who did the review of this said, Never have I seen a more grisly and physically repulsive film than Fires on the Plane. (laughs) You know you did something right if you're doing a war movie and they say that about your fucking movie. Uh, And then they said critics have uh, since reversed course over the years and hailed it for its brutality. Shit, now I'm in. Now I gotta see this goddamn thing. Uh, Next up is Inglorious Bastards. Great movie. Great fucking movie. Uh, The opening scene of this is still one of my favorites to this day. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, huge fan of this. Is that Tarantino's best scene? I, I'm. I don't know. Uh, Reservoir Dogs, where homeboys dancing around and cutting that motherfucker's ear off, cutting is pretty his ear good. Off is really good. Um, and even the death scene where they're lying on the ground, shot up, is is pretty good too. And there's so many yeah. great scenes in Pulp Fiction that mm-hmm. it's so tough. He's so good. Uh, I, this one I'm a little biased of Bob because I read this script um, first before the movie came out. And he's so talented as a writer that everything you saw when this movie came out was exactly word for word was on the page. And I don't know that there's been another director that I've ever read who writes his own material like that, that it is word for word exactly what you're seeing in the film. He's brilliant. I mean, he's just fucking brilliant across the board. And I loved, love this film. Who was your favorite character in this? Um, I mean, it's hard not to lock like uh christoph waltz i mean he won the oscar for it and anything he's in he's just like he's he's there aren't a whole lot of people that can play like a completely abhorrent obnoxious son of a bitch and everything they do and still be pretty talented like you still identify with that guy a little bit he's Mm -hmm. a great actor he he might be he's probably a top five actor alive right now to be honest oh fuck yeah he's awesome man every movie he's Mm -hmm. in he's amazing I was impressed with Brad Pitt in this. This was one of the first times where I looked at Brad Pitt, and I was like, oh, shit. I, this is, you're, you're, you could be really fucking good and win an Oscar one day, and then he ended up winning an Oscar one day. Uh, ironically, it was with Quentin Tarantino. Um, I liked him in 12 Monkeys and shit, but uh, this one did it for me. I was like, all right, cool, man. I didn't like Eli Roth in this movie. I don't know if you guys did. That was the only one that stuck Not out for me. his first choice, I think. You didn't like the Bear Jew? No, I, I like the character. I just don't like him as an actor. He's a director, and they th- kind of threw him in because they were homies doing some horror shit together behind the scenes. But uh, now, I don't like him as an actor. Do you know who was originally supposed to be the Bear Jew? No, I don't, actually. Adam was... Sandler. Come on. that what a, th- This is Eli Roth better than Adam Sandler in this role. Well, I would, hang on. I would not have believed Adam Sandler as a giant fucking got a giant jew who beats people to death with a baseball bat i'm sorry but i wouldn't have believed him as the fucking dude in uh uncut joms um and he was really fucking good in I, that. I, I obviously I hated that, that i hated that script but that made me think he could do a movie like this 
That's really fucking interesting. No way. What happened with it? Do they say? Uh, it's it, like he was he was promised the part. It was good to go, but he had already signed on to do Funny People, and the movies were shooting at the exact same time. As Funny People, yeah, Ugh. with Judd, Judd Apatow. I saw it. Yeah, it was two hours and forty five minutes of Judd's midlife crisis. Yeah, gross. Yeah, Judd ended up living that character afterwards by doing stand up, going back to stand up. Like, ugh. Fuck that. You could have been in Inglorious Bastards versus Funny People. Wow, dude. That's, that's got a sting. This is an all-timer. That's what I would be pissed off about. If I missed an all-timer, like if, if you auditioned for one of those mm. movies that was just an all-time <laughs> classic, like, shit. That's the only one I have regret over is Black Hawk Down, where I watched that film and I was like, shit, this was fucking dope, and I wish I would have gotten that one. Everything else, eh. Can, right. you, can you just imagine, though, Adam Sandler going, Teddy fucking Williams knocks it out of the park. <laughs> I can. Oddly enough, like, I can. I think it would have been rad. I think the part would have been bigger, too, you would imagine. Yes. If it was Sandler instead of Eli Roth. Fuck. Now you're talking me into this. That line just talked me into it, Delco. Yeah. I think Sandler would have been dope, actually. I, God, he, it would have been funny to watch him laughing over at Crush Skull. Over and over and over again? Because yeah. it just takes a good director. I think he can do it as an actor. I mean, my line read right there, I feel like I should have been Beju. Yeah, or maybe the stand-in, you know? Maybe the stand-in. <laughs> uh, uh, we can make another one. We can make an Inglorious Bastards prequel where we're just Irish dudes, Merc and Brits. You're the, ba- yeah. you're the bear mick. That'd be a good one. That'd be yeah. a good one. Uh, next up is Rome, Open City, 1945. Didn't see this. This was uh, some Italian bullshit. And uh, congratulations. I'm sure it was rad. He got an Oscar nomination for screenplay, but uh, a little before me. And uh, I mean, this was not brought up in any of the classes that I ever took. So. It's directed by Isabel, Isabella Rossellini's dad. Oh, really? That's something. Yeah. Yeah. Good for that. Sure. Yeah. Good for that. Uh, next up, this movie was dope, dude. The Deer Hunter. Let's go. Holy shit. When's the, do you remember watching this for the first time? Uh, yeah, I was, a, I was like probably 10 or 12. Really? Yeah. I was in college. College mm-hmm. was the first time I saw this, and it was an excellent movie, but uh, it also fucking haunted my dreams. It was the, one of the first ones that haunted my dreams. The first Russian roulette scene? I, I, that's the first one I ever saw. Yeah. That's the first one I ever saw, but this movie was fucking dope. And uh, it was one of those where, yeah, I'm in college. It was uh, the summer. I think I was taking a couple courses just to do it and then uh, still bouncing at night and shit. And we didn't have really anything to do. So we just started going in. Bob, there was a company. Uh, was it AMC? AMC was doing, I think, a, a top 100 list. AFI. That going, that's it. And so we started watching all of the top 100 from the AFI movies. And this one was on there. And that's how I discovered it. And, uh, and it was fucking great, dude. Holy shit. Um, that remember did- that? <clears throat> it was like a 30 minute POW scene in that fucking movie too where you're just like shit I was going to say Dan uh, have you ever had a Russian roulette game as exciting as the one in this film uh, we don't use revolvers anymore so it would end pretty quickly if we played <laughs> Russian roulette with a semi-automatic handgun <laughs> probably after the first try Yeah, actually because somebody would blow their fucking brains out um, but no the way that that scene is great I mean, just the way they build, like, it, there's not a whole lot of dialogue to explain what's going on. So they, uh, and that that's good writing, right? Mm-hmm. Where you don't have a lot of expositional dialogue, but everybody knows exactly what's happening. Like, he's raising the stakes by having him add more ammunition so he can fucking kill everybody in the room yep. and shit like that. It's just, it, yeah, it was great. And great directing. Uh, mm-hmm. How many did this, how many Oscars is this fucking thing? It was nominated for nine, won five. Shit. Which is a lot. Who were the five? Was it because uh, it was Best Christopher? Picture and Best Director, but I don't remember what else. Was Christopher Walken nominated? Probably for Best Supporting, yeah. Has he ever won an Oscar? Look him up. I don't know if he's actually ever won. He's always so great, but I, I've, I, would have, I felt like I would have remembered his speech. Yeah, he, he won. He did. He did. What well, did he win? For this. Oh, no shit. Well, I wasn't alive, so, you know, sorry. Damn, dude. And that's probably it, right? <laughs> He's never won again. Yeah, that's it. You only need one. He didn't win for that watch speech? He should have, right? I always thought that in Pulp Fiction, that he should have been nominated for Best Supporting just for that one fucking scene. It's happened in the past. I think, Oscar-wise, the least amount of screen time for a supporting actor role was eight minutes, and somebody won it for eight minutes in a movie. John Hurt. Yep. 
And, and I um, think I think uh, he could have done it. What is it? Uh, fuck you. That dude. Viggo Mortensen movie yeah. where he's raising the family. Yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, History of Violence. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But Walken could have won for that watch scene in my book. We still remember word for word that scene to this day. Next up was a movie called The Steel Helmets in 1951. Never heard of it. Me neither. It's about the Korean War here. It says... The Forgotten War. Let's forget this movie. Yeah, exactly. We'll move on here. The next one, shit. All right, so I saw this in school. They showed this. This was mandatory watching. This was glory. And I don't know if it's because I, I grew up in Georgia, but the Civil War was... Uh, this was the movie they showed to explain the Civil War to mm. us, essentially. And God damn, this movie was fucking awesome, dude. Yeah. Denzel Washington's one tear as he's getting whipped uh, down the side of his face and then still staring into the uh, the officer's eyes during that was incredible. Way better than Roots, by the way. Oh, yeah. I mean, Fuck different yeah, stuff going on here. It's a tale of, uh, you know, it's just two very different situations going on. But this is uh yeah i i because we, we watched both in school we watched roots as well yep both we pretty too. both pretty graphic um but this one was good they they dipped a little into the white savior stuff a little bit which to be fair you know one hundred and fifty thousand or so americans died to white americans died to end slavery right so mm -hmm. it's not like there wasn't some of that but i did like the way like it, it teaches some good lessons like it's hard to hate up close i don't know what uh i, I don't recall what Matthew Broderick, how he felt about black people before this all started, but being in, a, in real life, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, I know he or in real the life, movie. In real life, he hates him. Okay. I mean, I mean his character in the. Oh, in so the his character in the movie, if you remember, he was uh, best friends with uh, one of the black eventual soldiers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Robert Robert Gouldshaw's family was like super abolitionist. Yeah, so right. Okay. He was yeah. <clears throat> so, but showing him like. Because remember, there's a scene where... Uh, he won't take pay. You no, know, no, he's getting picked getting on. Getting boots. Oh, yeah, yeah He's getting yeah, picked yeah. on, and he goes, beat him. Mm. you got to beat him because you've got to be like every other soldier. And then he goes and apologizes to him in the tent later of like, mm. hey, you understand. Like, I'm above you, and I've got to discipline you. Yeah. Fuck. Um, it was a good movie. But uh, Morgan Freeman and Denzel Washington are... This This is on the, both, each of their top five performance lists as well. Um, well, Denzel won the Oscar for this. Yeah. That was his first Oscar yeah. for supporting, and then he ended up winning uh, Best Actor for Training Day. Mm. But uh, yeah. that was my, this was my first introduction, I think, to Morgan Freeman. Um, because I remember Driving Miss Daisy was after that, and I think he won the Oscar for Driving Miss Daisy. But correct me if I'm wrong, Bob. I think Glory was first, right? Uh, they might have been the same year. If Daisy, Daisy is, yeah, it was the same year. Was it really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, he exploded after that. And ever since then, he's still been Morgan Freeman for 35 fucking years. I mean, he's looked the same. For like, Does he look at... He, I know. he looks the exact fucking same. Pull, he, pull it up. Yeah, look at that, dude. He looks exactly the same. This is 1989. There I am in 1989. I look the same in 2023. Look at that, dude. Identical. It's fucking identical 35 years later. Or has he, has he just always looked 60 years old? That might be the move. If you know you're going to be in Hollywood for a while, age yourself early <laughs> and then back off of it as you get older. Probably. Shit, dude. Uh, great film. Uh, next up. So this is an old one, but I did see this movie. All Quiet on the Western Front. Um, this was from 1930. And, uh, and I, this one I did watch. And it was great. This kind of like, as far as like film school and all that shit, they, they always describe this as like the blueprint of like war movies and all that other stuff. And I know they're saying it in this article as well, but that's what they teach. And, uh, and this one was really fucking good. Um, but it has been years and years since I've seen this. So I, I'm probably alone in that, I would imagine, right? I've only seen the new one. Yeah, I didn't see the new one. New one fucks. Yeah. Does it? It's yeah. great. Who who was in the new one? It's a foreign film. Nobody it's just knows. all Germans. Yeah. No shit. Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. a, it's a German film. Uh, the one dude is from Inglorious Bastards, though. The German guy, the sniper. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I it, haven't seen it. What year did it, did it the remake come out? Twenty twenty two. It was Last nominated year. for Best Picture. Oh uh, yeah, I didn't see it. Yeah, I didn't see it. Cut. It was all in German, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but you can watch it dubbed, which isn't good. No, I don't like that. No, I watched. No, it. I, I watched, watch it, I watched it, it in German. Yeah. I'd rather watch it with subtitles than watch it dubbed. Whenever they're trying to fit people's voices into to mouths like that, I hate it. You're just like, dude, you're not saying it's that fucking bullshit. terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next up, Platoon. Let's go, dude. Do you like Platoon? 
Yeah, I did. Yeah, uh, it felt. Uh, I mean, I was never in Vietnam, but I've been in war before, and I saw this both before and after being at war. It rings true. There's definitely sociopaths out there. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I think, um, did Willem Dafoe win an Oscar for this? I know he was nominated, but I can't remember if he won. He should have, won. Right? Did I, he win for this or the Jesus movie? I don't remember. Um, but he he's he's great in this. I mean, it's just he's like, fantastic in this. It, it's a it's an extraordinary thing to go somewhere and you know your job is to kill everybody. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then try to maintain some semblance of being a normal human being throughout that process, especially if you're in a leadership position. I think a lot of like lower enlisted people, it's easy just to say. I'm following orders and stuff, but once you're in command of other dudes, things start to change a little bit. Um, they both, uh, both <clears throat> Behringer and Defoe were nominated, yeah, but they lost to Michael Caine for Hannah and her sisters. Fuck you, Hannah and her sisters. I like Mike Michael Caine, but I don't I've, like I've uh, that. There's no of... way they should have beat Willem Defoe <laughs> for this fucking movie. Yeah, I've never even heard of that movie. I have. I like Michael Caine though. Fuck that movie. That's crazy. Are yeah, you serious? But Platoon was great. It was a great movie, yeah. Look Fun. up Defoe. Uh, did he win for the the Christ movie? Uh, the Last Temptation of Christ. Yes. Let's see if he's won. Because he did win an Oscar, and I think it was for that. He's had to have won an Oscar, right? Uh, he received his Academy nominated Award four times. for or a nom for Platoon. He's also been nominated for Shadows of the Vampire, The Florida Project, at Eternity's Gate. Uh, Never won though. Yeah, I don't think he's ever won. Fuck you. He didn't get nominated for Passions of the Christ. Or, uh, Last Temptation. Last no. Temptation. Wow, dude. Fuck you. That's that's criminal. That's absolutely criminal. He should have won for this, um, for Platoon. Um, this was a great one. I think this was like, I think it's one of the first war movies that I saw. Like is like growing up, and it frightened the shit out of me. I was like, there's no way it's it's like this. Um, and you're saying it's pretty accurate. Um, I mean, especially in Vietnam, it's not like now where everybody's in constant communication with each other across a, a wide area mm -hmm. of operation, but it wasn't like that back then. I mean, you, you were able to communicate, but not instantaneously necessarily, and the comms gear was kind of fucky, you know, compared to what it is now. So, yeah, it was, I mean, if, if the same with Apocalypse Now, like that, that idea that some special forces guy could take his unit and move them into Laos and start doing crazy shit, yeah, that's believable back then for okay. sure. Yeah, because uh, like as far as my family goes, so great grandfather was in World War One. Uh, other grandfather fought in Korea. Uh, other one fought in World War Two. And it, my my parents like it, they were too young for Vietnam, so that skipped. So there was nobody there for that. So I don't really have any firsthand knowledge of knowing anyone who was in Vietnam. And uh, I was always curious what what it was like, obviously. But um, I think Forrest Gump, you know, probably summed it up for me. Mm. <laughs> Uh, next up is uh, Come and See, 1985. I don't know this movie, actually. Looks Soviet. Okay. If I had to guess. Fuck them, dude. Fuck them. Now here's where the audience is going to get angry. Hurt Locker. So good. Hurt Locker. Come this on. This is everything Braveheart wished it was. <laughs> How angry are you about this movie, Dan? Uh, I, I mean, I don't care. It's terrible, though. It really. Everybody is. says it's terrible. What was the biggest thing that they got wrong? Um, <clears throat> I guess the biggest thing that they got. Well, first of all, no, uh, this isn't real. If that, if this was a real thing, and there was some like predator level eod guy out there we would all know about it he would have written several books by now it's just a complete fucking fantasy right that's that's one thing but the uh so this position doesn't even exist no it, it exists okay. eod exists okay. yeah but some superstar eod guy that some fucking two-star general is coming in like oh you're a badass dude like that's not real Get the fuck out of here but and then and then you know that that's hollywood though so whatever that part of it makes sense and then they jumped the shark by having him uh, strip down into civilian clothes, tuck a fucking Beretta P92 M9, whatever the fuck, uh, uh, shitty, the shittiest handgun of all time into his waistband and going out into the city like a fucking operator murking people and to rescue some kid. Like, fuck off, dude. This never happened. Shut the fuck up. Bob, you loved it. You loved it. 
I thought it was probably the most accurate portrayal of this war, uh, w- <laughs> of which I am intimately familiar. No. And uh, yeah, I just kind of it hit. I checked every box. You know what's funny is like you know obviously not being in the military. When I saw this, because I saw this in theaters. Um, and it won all the Oscars. This won Best Picture and all the shit. I think Best Director as well for Catherine Bigelow. It, that's, I, that's why. Because it was a female director of a war movie. That's the only reason it won anything. This movie is terrible. Well, the weird thing is, is a civilian, like, when I watched it, I thought, well, shit, this is a good movie. But I knew nothing about what was actually going on or any of these positions. Nothing. So I had no frame of reference for it. I'm just watching a film as a film. And then, obviously, when I started working with you guys on Range 15, one of the first questions I asked Jared, we were, we were working on that script together, I said, uh, what's your favorite war movie? What do you like? And blah, 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 blah. And he named off a list of names. And I go, you don't like Hurt Locker? And he, that's when he was like, are you fucking kidding me? Mm. Hurt Locker's the worst movie ever made. And I was like, oh, shit, really? It goes, does everybody feel like that? And he goes, yes, everybody feels like that. And I was like, oh, wow. I wonder if anybody's ever told Jeremy Renner to his face. I will. <laughs> Bring his crippled ass in here right now, and I'll tell him. You're like, you needed to do some renovations on that script, motherfucker. Nailed it, dude. Nailed it. Dan just drives up to meet him in a snowplow right out in front of the studio. Be dark. Be dark, but it was great. Uh, next up is Bridge on the River Kwai. Excellent movie. Mm-hmm. I've seen this movie. Shit, man. It's another TNT classic, dude. Um, or uh, what's the other channel that they had? AMC? Yeah, TNT and AMC were usually the ones rolling these. Yep. Sometimes, actually, you got a lot of good war movies on the History Channel, too. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. I I don't know if my favorite History Channel war movie is going to be on here, but if it's not, I'm lodging a complaint. All right, well, let me know after the list, because I'll be curious. Uh, I've seen this movie probably three times. This is a fantastic movie, dude. Um, Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's another one of those uh, classics. The movie itself is great, but also structurally, this is something that people taught from as uh, time went on. Uh, just the quietness of it mm. and some of the scenes, like they didn't church it up with crazy music and shit. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this film. Yeah, because mid-50s, it's all spaghetti westerns yep. back then. And it's just like fucking music. Uh, instead of instead of transition scenes, it's just music. Like there's, well, a, well, well, there's, there's dialogue well, and then it well, immediately well, cuts yep. to the desert and there's this music. It's like, yeah. all right, cool, man. But these guys, yeah, this is really good. Yeah, this one was fantastic and uh, uh, big fan. Uh, the next up is uh, the Battle of Algiers. Nobody gives a fuck about France. Keep moving. Yeah, I've never seen it. You guys ever seen this movie? No. That's a negative dog. Absolutely not. Negative dog. Uh, but they are saying in this this article here, let's say, no wonder the film's raw eyewitness aesthetic has been so influential, giving everyone from uh, Alfonso Cuaron to Christopher Nolan. The example they needed to turn urban settings into white knuckle battlegrounds. I don't know. I don't know if no one's seen this fucking movie. Uh, next one up. Haven't seen this one. This is an old school talkie. Uh, the best years of our lives, 1946. It says it takes place on the home front. That's not a war movie. No, it, it says it won eight Oscars. Uh, so it's about three veterans returning from World War II. And it all takes uh, place on the home front rather than behind the battle lines. Um, so... I never saw it. Sorry. Uh, I didn't see it. Next up, Schindler's List. Fuck, dude. Shit. Did yeah, I just, I, this, this movie really influenced me a lot, actually. Did it? Yeah. I started making all sorts of lists afterwards. Yeah, I bet you did. Yeah. Grocery lists. All sorts. Laundry list. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of it. Now, while jo- do you ever uh, have um, Joel... Mill about the front yard as you sit on a balcony, shirtless, smoking a cigarette. Clean. No, because but only because I don't have a balcony. Oh. I mean, I guess I do. It's just windows, porch. though. There's yeah. no porch out there. I have a porch, but um, and I have a back porch as well. But yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, jo- to be honest, Joel's not the kind of guy that you would keep, or you would send him to the to the mines or something. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, or just kill him right out. He's kind of useless, so I don't think there would be any reason to keep him around. Um, but no, I, Schindler's List is fucking crazy. It is. It is. It's one of those movies, though, that I remember where this will put us in the Oppenheimer category of I heard about the length of the film beforehand, mm. and I sat this out in the theaters, and I waited till it was on cable later on. So I don't think I saw this movie until maybe three or four years after it came out. It was a fantastic movie, but it's one of those films where I watched once, and I never watched it again. 
I never went back and watched it like multiple times. I don't know why you would watch it multiple times. I don't either. It's yeah, not a high rewatchability factor. No, no, but it is good and it deserves all the accolades and all that shit. But uh, yeah. Uh, next up was Mash in 1970. Mm. Now this was highly influential for years and years to come. Spawned a TV show and everything else. Uh, great film. Um, I, no qualms with this one being on the list, you. No, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's. It was one of the first ones that captured the fucking goofy bullshit that happens in comedy. Super it had a little bit of comedy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it, uh, the the movie's not a comedy. Like the the TV show is a comedy where dramatic stuff happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. This is a dramatic movie where comedy happens. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They kind of flipped it, but I, I yeah I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good, and I think uh, Mash when it's the last episode of it was the highest rated television show of all time. I don't know if that record has ever been broken. Was it Dallas? Maybe Dallas broke it, but maybe. But it's everybody's dad's favorite show. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, so it's tough to scratch this one off the list. It's weird. These guys are kind of dying one by one now, um, and they're almost the the, mm. the regulars of this series are almost all gone. But it was a great show, man, and it was a great film. Um, so yeah, it definitely deserves to be here. Next up is uh, Paths of Glory from 1957. I didn't see it. It's Stanley Kubrick. And Kirk it's Douglas. Good. It's really good. Is it? Yeah. Okay. But I haven't seen it in 10 years, 15 years. Who knows? I don't remember. I think I watched it on deployment, actually. So that would have been 2008, 7 or 8. Oh, no shit. It's mm. as much of a courtroom drama. <laughs> yeah, it's it like Heart's War film. almost. But uh, remember that stupid movie with Bruce Willis? I read for it. That was terrible. one of the best scripts I'd ever read and one of the worst no. movies to go with it. Like It's probably that, on this list. That was my biggest, as far as like page to screen that was one of my biggest influences of you read something that i no lie called my agent i was like i think this will win every oscar there is when i saw it in theaters it was fucking awful and i was like how did you fuck up a script so good and this was my first exposure to it um was that hearts war it is definitely not on this list that movie fucking sucks yeah, that's not good um but uh this was kubrick and you guys liked it bob you liked it mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great movie. It's like this is like a more so than Spartacus, like the movie you would show to show that Kirk Douglas is a fucking yeah. like all timer. Yeah. Uh, next up, Apocalypse. Now, <sighs> second favorite war movie of all time for me. Dennis Hopper, Lawrence Fishburne, Mark Jean. I mean, there's a lot of talent in this. Second favorite war film of all time for yeah. me. This is number two on my list. Um, I love this film. I watched it in college on mushrooms. The first time I watched this was on mushrooms. And then I went back a year later, and they had like a remastered mm. cut that they were dropping. And I was like, man, I wonder if this holds up without being on drugs. And it sure does. <laughs> uh, Apocalypse Now, to this day, haunts me. My The scene in there that got me was the fucking playmate who was out in that tent who had mm. been raped over and over again and was stuck, and nobody would fucking help her. And you were like, holy shit, dude. This girl's going to get fucking killed. And I, I, There was so many fucked up scenes in this movie, man. Uh, but I love it. <laughs> Yeah, it's this is uh, th forget about war movies. This is one of the best movies of any kind yes. that's ever been made. A hundred percent. John Milius was the guy who wrote this. He's one of my favorite writers of yeah. all time, screenwriters of all time. Guy's a fucking badass. Yeah, his daughter I, Amanda's a buddy of ours. Yes, she was on the show, yeah. and I didn't want to fan out too much in front of her, but I love your fucking dad. Yeah. Um, I'm sure she's used to it. I'm sure she's the last person in Hollywood still smoking real cigarettes. By the way, yeah. And uh, he was walking around on set the whole time carrying a fucking handgun and shit. Oh, like, yeah. This got out of control. Yeah. This whole entire shoot went off the rails as far as budget and everything else and still ended up as being one of the greatest movies ever. Mm -hmm. Usually something this fucked up uh, when it goes off the rails like this ends up being a piece of shit movie. But this one to this day, I challenge you to watch this to this day if you have not seen this movie and it not to fuck you up. It's awesome, dude. Big fan of this movie. Uh, next up is The Grand Illusion in 1937. Don't know it. Bob, do you know this movie? Me neither. D'Anthony? Uh, no, I've never heard of it. No, I haven't either. It's Orson Welles, though. Is it? Or no, he, he wrote about it. Wait. Asked which two films he'd say for prosperity, Grand Illusion and Renoir. Huh. huh. All right. So, oh, no, Renoir is the guy that did Grand Illusion, I see. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not. Uh, I, I won't judge it. I just haven't seen yeah. it. Yeah. I haven't seen no it. No idea. Uh, next up is Full Metal Jacket. Let's go. Did you like this movie? Sure, yeah. I did too. I mean, I liked, um, yeah, the, the entire movie's good. The, the basic training part is good. 
Vincent D'Onofrio plays the uh, biggest piece of shit in the history of pieces of shit. Yeah. Um, Private Pile. Arlie Ermey just plays himself, um, which is nice. <laughs> and Matthew Modine was the perfect person to cast in that role because he's such a pussy. God. You know what I mean? That's what I thought too, dude. But, but like, that's – in in the middle of a fucking war like Vietnam where people are getting drafted and don't want to. It wasn't like World War II, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's the kind of guy that you see over there, right? So I, the casting was great. He was just such a fucking gimp. Yeah. He was perfectly casted yep. for this. I agree, dude. Um, and then Animal Mother as well. Just oh! In the helicopter. Like, how do you just shoot women and children like that? It goes easy. You just don't lead them as much. <laughs> Which is one of the best lines in film history. That character was my favorite character in the movie. Mm -hmm. Animal Mother is my favorite character in that movie. God damn, I love this film. Get some! Get some! Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. This is a great movie. Uh, Stanley, another Stanley Kubrick movie. Yeah. Um, so yeah, who, who knows what went on that shoot? Probably 900 takes. Uh, last but not least here, and this will end the list, and rightfully so, although these aren't ordered, by the way, uh, Saving Private Ryan. The opening 25 minutes to that is... Is it the greatest opening 25 minutes in any film in the history of... of of movies, I can't think of any that are better. I than can't that, either, to be honest. Um, I don't think people remember. I said this on the Max Martini show when then he was on Softcore <clears throat> History. Mm -hmm. Like people, that's the first time the American soldier has ever been shown as like a piece of expendable meat. Like even in Platoon, you would have like gruesome deaths, and in Full Metal Jacket, you'd have gruesome deaths. But they were very like. It was usually a people you knew. and It, it was, was dramatic. It was dramatic yeah. and stuff like that. Dude, the door just drops and like a hundred American soldiers, our, our, our boys in blue, just get fucking riddled with bullets. Yep. Just get fucking blown to pieces. Yeah, that's, Like they're nobody. This movie was fucking intense. This is one of those that was so intense I remember where it was. I remember the theater that I was in when I saw it. And that was one of the first movies that I can remember in the theater of just... Because uh, it was sold out, I went to a night show, so I, I had to get tickets close closer to the screen than I usually do. So I think I was like maybe three rows back, and it was so fucking intense that I was gripping the the handles on the seats mm. inside the, the the movie theater, the the armrest. I was gripping this the armrest in it, and I was like, oh my fucking god! And I didn't know how long that scene was going to go on for because I had I didn't read any reviews. I had just walked into it just to walk into it, and. Uh, Holy shit. It was so fucking intense that when it was over, I remember just taking like a huge deep breath when they had finally crossed the the line mm -hmm. of, uh, <clears throat> all right, we're not getting shot out anymore and we're, we're probably going to make it out of this. But my God, dude, this movie to this day is, is the best ever. And is it the best ever Spielberg movie? Um, I mean, you E.T. is pretty good, right? E.T. is great. Uh, Jaws? Yeah. Jaws is fucking crazy, Jaws, dude. I the first Jaws one, the, the first one's pretty good, but yeah. E.T. is that's a fucking solid movie. So many great Spielberg movies, yeah. but this one in particular, man, wow, uh, he crushed it. Did Max tell you any cool stories on that when you guys were talking to him? Yeah, we he was talking about how because he was in the scene where that guy gets stabbed. Yep, like that fucking grueling stabbing scene. Well, his death's pretty bad, too. Yeah, he yeah. gets shot yeah. in the neck, and he's, like, bleeding out as that fight goes on and stuff. So he was talking about being in that shoot. He said Spielberg, like, turned him at one point, and he's like, I think this is the most fucked up thing I've ever shot. Really? Yeah, and he had already done, he'd done Schindler's List, like, five years before this. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. He was, but, like, during that scene, Spielberg was like, yeah, this is the most gruesome, I think he said gruesome, this is the most gruesome thing I've ever shot. And then there was another story about how and they like uh, they didn't have enough like bodies to explode in the final battle scene because Max was not in the D-Day scene. Max was only right. in, in the final battle, right? Because um, he's Matt Damon's commander. Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he said that they like blew up a body, and Spielberg was like, "Ah, I didn't quite get it. Like, yeah, I need to reset. Uh, bring out another exploding body." And this is like a, a huge budget film, right? Huge. Oh yeah, it was like 125 million, which in ninety eight is. Fuck! It's probably you know one sixty today. Yeah, and so, so they were like, "Oh, we only we only had the one." And Spielberg, he said, Spielberg just lost his fucking mind. Which he's not. I would have too. He's not someone you expect to like go insane on a shit. So like David O. Russell or someone just like yeah. blow up up at people. But Max said that Spielberg just like fucking exploded. Well, in all the articles I read after it, after I saw the film, he just wanted to get it right and be accurate and uh, and have it be intense and make you feel like you were really there. So you could understand the gravity of it. 
and him exploding like that, in my opinion, he's in completely the right on that. Like, you're just fucking lazy in art department if you don't have multiple bodies back there for, for this shit. Like, fuck those guys. Um, yeah. I'd never lay that on Spielberg ever. No. Uh, and now I think we need to address some of the notable uh, snubs. Yeah. Because there's all these weird foreign film. Nobody gives a fuck about what happened in Japan. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Unless it's like uh, 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 Rashomon or something like that. Like, that's great cinema for sure because the story is good as well. But I don't care about any of this other stuff. Can I spike the football in a movie that didn't make the list? Yeah. Thin Red Line. Fuck it. Thin Red Line's great, yeah. Casualties. No, of, he's, he's casualties of, shit. Yeah, I don't like Terrence Malick. Oh, uh, well, you're wrong. Yeah, Thin Red Line is dope as fuck. Thin yeah. Red Line's a great movie. Casualties of War also from that same general time frame is a great movie. But th th they didn't make my list of snubs. We Were Soldiers is one of the best military movies ever made, right? It was a very good film, um, yeah. Uh, and, j like, the the story of Hal Moore is incredible. And the story of Basil Plumley, the guy that Sam Elliott played, mm -hmm. he made all four combat jumps. This is a real human being. He just died, like, two years ago. Made all four combat jumps plus one um, from World War II. Great movie. Uh, Enemy at the Gates is one of the best war movies ever. I mean, that's a great fucking war movie. Black Hawk Down's not on this list. Are you oh, fucking yeah. kidding me? Yeah, that's, that's right. Insane. Are you are you fucking kidding me? That's nuts. Black dude. Hawk Down or Navy SEALs. Neither one. And Navy <laughs> SEALs. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, but Black Hawk Down's not on this. And then uh, Fury, Brad Pitt and Fury. Oh, Shia shit, LaBeouf. dude. Fury that, is, Fury is it's the most oh, underrated. Fury is, is as good, if not better, than 90% of the movies on this list. God damn, Fury was good. Uh, the Patriots not on here, which I thought was as, as eh. campy as parts of it are. I think it was a good movie. I'm but, okay with that being off the list. Um, the one that shocked me was Hamburger Hill. Hamburger Hill yeah, wasn't on this list. And kind I enjoyed of a classic. That film. But 13 Hours is a great military film. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Um, Lack of tour, tour, tour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then for older ones that are shockingly not on this list, one, Dr. Strangelove, which is like a... Yes. Th that's, that's like classic cinema how that's like that's like leaving off uh a uh, 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 citizen kane or some shit from a list like what the fuck are you doing here that's yeah, how this, you know, variety is full of shit this is variety by uh, the way, so and then lawrence of arabia how's that not on here yeah that's like one of the cla that that is a parallel to citizen kane and it's a war movie like yeah. what the fuck mm -hmm. that's wild i don't know i'll give you my snub that's not on here it's not as good as like lawrence of arabia but i fucking love this movie uh zulu Zulu. Michael Caine. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it actually. Neither of you have seen it? Uh uh. Oh my God. It's Michael uh -uh. Caine's first movie. It's okay. Essentially like a, it's essentially like a sort of Western, but it's the British in South Africa holding off a giant Zulu attack. So instead of like the cavalry, you know, holding off the Apaches mm -hmm. or whatever, it's after the Battle of Issa Luanda and uh, the whole British column has been like completely destroyed. There's just like these hundred British dudes at a little outpost building a bridge. And and they're like, dude, they're the whole fucking Zulu army's coming. It's just like a fucking hundred of them. They have to hold up and like just fight them off. It, it's brilliant. If you watch it, you'll see a lot of like future um, influence on other movies, especially British filmmakers mm. like Ridley Scott from that film. No shit. Because okay. in, in England, for whatever reason, I don't know if they still do it, but it used to be a tradition that it played every Christmas day, mm -hmm. like on their TNT. Or whatever. Gotcha. It was like an accidental Christmas movie. I I fucking love Zulu, and it, it is literally Michael Caine's first screen credit. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, it, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Uh, and then of, not. I don't want to not mention it because it is kind of a. This is more of a cult favorite, but Heartbreak Ridge. Oh um, shit! With Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Dude, I watched Heartbreak Ridge with my dad too. Uh, yes, that was always on TBS and TNT, dude. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, there's just so many good one-liners in that movie, and was but he the, Sergeant Gunny? Was that but, the one? Uh, he, he was a gunnery sergeant, yeah, yeah. But like the 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 plot is kind of stupid, to be honest. That's why it's not on the list. It's like re, I love that re, film re, though. Recon Marines are elite. There's no you don't you don't show up to fucking Camp Pendleton and they're like, oh, that's just the fucking retard recons over there. They don't they they don't even do PT. Like no, they're the most elite people on that base. So that whole premise where there there was some nerdy dude in charge of the the infantry division there. And they just didn't care what recon was doing. That's nonsense. Okay. That's that whole the whole premise is stupid. And then it apexed with invading Grenada, which is not like the sexiest thing ever, as well. So, well, I understand why that one didn't make the list, but it is. 
I'll give it honorable mention because I love the film. It's Clint Eastwood at his most Clint Eastwoody. Fuck you know yeah, dude! I mean? I, and again, I watched it with my dad, and uh, there's a, like there's a weird bonding thing when mm. you watch war movies with your dad too. So. Um, I thought 1917 yeah. is worthy of mentioning. I was going to ask you about that. So Dunkirk isn't on this list. Cra- Dunkirk's also, also great. Uh, yeah. 1917 isn't on this list. That's pretty egregious. I also uh, would like to see Gettysburg on the list. I didn't. I, Jeff Daniels is good in that. He's good in that. He's it's, a great actor. Like I, it's, it's funny because as kids, most of us got to know Jeff Daniels as a fucking retarded person on Dumb and yeah. Dumber. But he, on both sides of that role like incredible performances in real movies. You well, you remember I mean? Newsroom? Like, dude, yeah. he was lights out in that too. Yeah. But uh, uh, Gettysburg. So I know the backstory of that. That was um, uh, Ted Turner who put that together. Now, Ted Turner obviously owns the Braves, owns CNN, started TBS and TNT and all that other shit. Well, there was this theater in downtown Atlanta that used to show um, Gone with the Wind. Over and over and over again, it was right next to CNN, and you can go see it every night of the week, and he played it, and his dream was to have this three-hour epic-ish movie like that, and he ended up putting Gettysburg together, and it bombed miserably. I don't think it made any fucking money. Yeah, I don't think it did. I don't think it made a lot of money either. I just think it's an amazing movie. The, the, like, the fighting scenes are all right, but the acting... Like, the lineup of actors in that is just fucking ridiculous. It is. And every performance to me is great. Like, fucking what? God damn it. Who's the guy who played Basil? Uh, whatever. Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott in that as General Buford. Mm-hmm. Fucking yep. fantastic. Obviously, Jeff Daniels. Martin Sheen, great as Lee. And Berenger, even better as Longstreet. Like, it's just down the line. Like, awesome. It was just shot weird to me. I, there, was a, there was a handful of It was of not great directing. No. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It felt more like a PBS type thing, and uh, God bless Ted for doing it. But he played that fucking movie in that theater over and over and over again. I mean, it came out around the same time as uh, as uh, Glory, right? Late eighties. No, it was ninety. Yeah, it was nineties. Glory was what eighty nine. Eighty nine. Yeah. But he loved those movies and wanted to put that together, and uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, either way, uh, tell us who uh, your favorite war movie is in the comments here on YouTube. Uh, and the biggest snubs from this list, we just named ours on here. Let us know what you think out there, because uh, maybe there's some we missed. Uh, now's the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week. Um, is he still back there? Yeah, there he is. Come on up. Come on up, sir. Let's go. There it is. There he comes. All right. He's got an amazing voice. I just want, I want to warn you guys for this. This is not a fake person. This is not a robot. This is not AI. Put that mic about an inch from your face there. Boom. Uh, there tell go. everybody your name. Uh, Caleb. Caleb. You're not, you're not a last we'll name go last name redacted. <laughs> yeah. Because of what you do, you're like, I don't want to be on this fucking show. That's all good. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's talk a little, a little yeah. closer. There you go. Perfect. Um, and we met, you said, in 2018. Yes, we did. Where was it at? Uh, Southern Pines Brewing Company while you guys were on the uh, Shaved Eagle tour. Okay. So up yep. in Denver? Uh, no. No. So, uh, or not the Shaved Eagle tour. Uh, where were you guys at? I think because uh, it was past, it was after range 15. Okay. But I think you guys were doing a little bit of a screening we uh, were. We, we did over a, at Fort Bragg. Yes, we did a yep. bunch all over the country, and uh, we had stopped in there. So I remember that. Yep. I think was it Evan that got up and gave a speech that that day? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Great. So I remember that night for yep. sure. It's hot as fuck. Yeah, because it was you, Evan, Matt, and um, yes, I remember that. We got trashed at that brewery. Yeah, I enjoyed yeah. that brewery. We had fun there. Yeah, I remember talking to you. There's a few parts of that night I don't remember. Oh, same here. Yeah. When you were like, oh, hey, we met before. And I was like, bro, I don't know if we did or not, man. There was a lot of blackout nights during all that, that whole run. Yeah. Because we were going to different screenings pretty much every night uh, all over the country. It and was it was non-stop. a blast. It was a fucking blast. It was one of the funnest times ever. Oh, yeah. And it was great. Yeah, that was nonstop because I'd been listening to you guys since episode one. And so when I heard that you guys were going to be in town, yeah, I kind of fangirled a little bit and... uh Made sure I was down there. Who cares? But, Look, yeah. we're fucking grateful for, for everybody, man. Because oh, none of this shit great. would be possible. I know I say it a lot, but it, it really wouldn't. So <laughs> we're absolutely grateful, and uh, thank you for being here today. Who would you like to give the Drinking Bro of the Week to? Uh, so funny enough, uh, still kind of on the topic, it's actually kind of the uh, hunting group that, I've, that I'm have that i part of. Uh, 
44th year that it's been going since my dad and my godfather started it. But part of the reason is because every year we have a theme based on some kind of stupid conversation that we had, some kind of joke. Mm -hmm. And the year after uh, Range 15 came out, the uh, the theme of the year was uh, Viper Semen. Oh, no shit. Yep. That's great. Yep. So that was going to have to give it to those guys, uh, all for the most part, uh, old uh, military guys and just overall entertaining group, but also just you guys. I mean, shit. I've listened to you guys since episode one. I listened to Dan and Rob on uh, their old podcast with TFM. No shit. What was the, the name? Of your, uh, what was the name of your old podcast over there? Uh, that was just inside TFM. Yep. Okay. Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> Is it still available? Is it still up? Or they no, rip it? Not up. They pulled nope. it. Okay. I do still have the episodes though, so I told them uh, if they if they want a they coffee want to go I've, back for the good I've, times. I've got an old iPod that still has. <laughs> no <laughs> that shit. shit. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I miss the fucking iPods too. Uh, I kind of do and kind of don't i uh, almost spotify is pretty convenient i dude i had all my sh i had thousands and thousands of songs though from uh yeah. doing these movies pe people would send in shit that you would try to use in a movie or not use in a yeah. movie so i think i'd maxed it out and i want to say it was like fifteen thousand songs mm. and it was that white brick oh it was heavy as shit yeah but when i went into the gym since nobody could call or text or mm. email or anything else it was simply about the workout. I didn't yep. have to worry about checking it for other fucking bullshit. And I, some people are like, oh, put on airplane mode or whatever. And I'm like, no, dude. It's, if I miss no. a call these days, it's too important and it sucks. So You're yeah. just too big of a deal, man. No, I mean, it's, it's not it's... that. I, I, look, I want to get out of these fucking calls. I want to be on this <laughs> shit. I just want to do the show every day. You know? Yeah. But uh, cheers, man. Thanks for being hey. here. We appreciate yeah, it. I'm going to have – uh, tell, uh, tell Homeboy back there. I'm going to have him on another show – since his wife broke that table and was a little mouthy earlier, he doesn't get to come up today. So you're, you guys are going to have to come back another day. No, they live up here in Leander, yeah. so they're good. So we'll have you up next time. I can promise you that, all right? Uh, thanks for tuning in, kids. Again, in the chat, tell us what your favorite war movie is and or biggest snub from this list from Variety. And take it with a grain of salt. Uh, these are Hollywood assholes. They don't really fucking know what uh, all the great movies are. And I'm sure some of these, like uh, one of these guys said was, oh, we're going to put some critics thing within there, these black and white movies from fucking Japan that nobody's seen. So fuck off with that shit. Uh, put it in the comments below and, uh, and we'll respond to you. As always, uh, go to iTunes, rate the show a five star and leave a quick review. Also head on over to Spotify. It's just a five star and we can walk away. 10,000, I will quit. We're close to 7,000 reviews now, so we're getting there. Just get us over 10,000. I'll shut the fuck up forever. I promise you. Thanks for tuning in, kids. For D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Podcast. Good night, everyone.